For over 100 years, the Missionary Sisters of the Immaculate Conception have served the needs of the poor, the underprivileged, and the destitute with determination, care, and compassion in Canada and around the world. Through their unselfish dedication, faith, and hard work, they built Mount St. Joseph's Hospital in Vancouver, first created to meet the healthcare needs of the area's Chinese community, but which now offers modern healthcare services to a diverse, multicultural community. The remarkable achievements of the Missionary Sisters of the Immaculate Conception started with a dream, a dream of their founder, Dahlia Tetro. Dahlia Tetro was born on February 4, 1865, in Maryville, a small country town near Montreal. Her twin brother died at seven months of age, and at two and a half years of age, her mother passed away. On the death of her mother, Dahlia's father immigrated to the United States, taking some of his nine children with him. At her mother's request, young Dahlia was left to live with her mother's sister and her husband who was well off financially, but disliked children. And while her health was frail throughout her life, she had a strong spirit and the will to express it. One day when Delia was in her window, look, waiting for the arrival of her uncle, which she always called Daddy, it was her uncle, she, uh, she saw him coming and she said, Ah, oh, Daddy, Daddy, very happy. And he looked at her and he stared at her and he said, I'm not your Daddy. And she replied, she said, you don't know what's a daddy, I do. And that changed everything. That changed everything. Dahlia's aunt and uncle spared no expense in attending to her education. As a young girl, she often spent time reading religious magazines, admiring the work of missionaries abroad. And in her memoirs, Dahlia told of a childhood dream that would go on to orient her entire life. All of a sudden, I saw a ripe wheat field as far as the eye can see. At a given moment, the ears of wheat changed into heads of children. And I understood that they represented the children of the world. Haunted by the thought of the poor, the underprivileged, and the destitute, Dahlia was drawn to a life of religious and community service. At age 26, she joined a group of women in Montreal who cared for the sick and the poor and worked with them for 10 years. She felt especially drawn to missionary work in foreign countries, but she was continually frustrated by her frail health, which prevented her from ever leaving the country. Eventually, she was successful in creating a school to train future missionaries in 1902. I would say that this dream of Delia became true in 1902. In 1902, along with uh, other companions, she founded our congregation, the Missionary Sister of the Immaculate Conception. And uh, it's the first missionary congregation for women in Canada. Seven years later, the young congregation sent out its first missionaries, a group of six sisters, to Canton, China, to take over an orphanage and also to work with the lepers there. The Chinese people always had a special place in Mother Dahlia's heart. In Vancouver, by the 1920s, 1,500 Chinese immigrants who had originally come to Canada to work on the railways had died from the cold, wet West Coast climate, harsh working conditions, strenuous labor, and lack of proper health care. In 1921, Archbishop Thomas Casey made an urgent appeal for help to deal with the health care needs of the area's Chinese residents. The Missionary Sisters of the Immaculate Conception sent four sisters across Canada by train from Montreal. Within a month of arriving, they had set up a school for the local children and a clinic 
including a four-bed infirmary in the small house they rented on Kiefer Street. As the years went by, the need for their services increased tremendously. In 1924, the sisters purchased a house and opened a dispensary on Campbell Avenue that grew to a three-story building. And this uh, dispensary uh, became a, a little clinic that they called the uh, Oriental Home, St. Joseph Oriental Home. Delia Tetro had a great faith in St. Joseph. He was our great provider, and she gave her his name everywhere. <laughs> and we prayed him too. A second dispensary was started in 1936 on Pender Street. In that same year, a young girl named Teresa Fung, who would later become Sister Teresa Fung, arrived from the Missionary Sisters of the Immaculate Conception Academy in Canton, China. Sister Tetro arranged for her immigration to Canada at a time when no Chinese women were allowed into the country. Sister Teresa Fung translated for the Chinese patients at the home and helped with their needs. She also spent time in Chinatown, begging for food and money to support the home. With improving living conditions, the Chinese population was expanding quickly. In 1941, the sisters purchased an old sheep ranch and orchard at Kingsway and Prince Edward Street, with the help of St. Patrick's Parish and the city of Vancouver. It was the first step toward building a new hospital. Sister Teresa Fung went to work to raise money to build the new hospital. She contacted the local Chinese associations who donated about one-third of the cost. She made long and difficult fundraising trips to 70 cities in British Columbia, visiting mines, paper mills and factories to raise money among the people who worked there, particularly among the Chinese workers and she made begging trips to large American cities on the West Coast to raise money in their Chinese communities. In 1946, the 25th anniversary of the arrival of the Missionary Sisters of the Immaculate Conception in Vancouver, Mount St. Joseph Hospital was opened. At the time of its opening, the hospital had 87 beds and housed medicinal, surgical, pediatric and obstetric facilities serving the needs of Chinese immigrants. In 1948, Mount St. Joseph's Hospital opened its doors to the general public, with special attention given to the needs of the multicultural community it serves. Throughout its history, the sisters have remained an integral part of its foundation, serving on the board of directors and in other capacities. The work here through the hospital, it's not a job. We are working within a ministry, and we are all ministering wherever we are. So when we uh, work with uh, this spirit, we forget the job and we work with our heart, with our love, our trust, our respect. And we have our mission statement for Providence Healthcare, which tells us what, how we live out here our ministry at Mount St. Joseph Hospital. I would like to invite the staff to the new employees to read once in a while our mission statement. Through the years, over 170 sisters have served in Vancouver, carrying out health care, education, and parish work with care and compassion. Their motto, Our Life is a Perpetual Hymn of Thanksgiving, expresses their desire to thank God by unconditionally loving and serving those that are in need. Today, the work of the Missionary Sisters of the Immaculate Conception goes on. They are now active in Canada, Peru, Chile, Bolivia, Cuba, Haiti, Malawi, Zambia, Madagascar, Philippines, China, Japan, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Building organizations that make a difference to the lives of the people there. And even though the sisters are now moving on to meet other challenges, their legacy and the inspiration of Delia Tetro will always be with us.
I would like our staff to remember Delia Tetro. It's because of her that we are here today. She is known in the hospital. She is loved and she is present. And her spirit is still alive at Mount St. Joseph Hospital. She is the one who will uh, help us through the years, through many changes that we went through. We may go through other changes, but Delia's spirit is present here at Mount St. Joseph Hospital.